Hey everyone and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So I'm here today with my September wrap up. I know I'm a little later than normal but it is what it is, right? Um, I read, how many did I read? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven books in September. A little less than I wanted to um, but you'll realize why in a minute and it's basically because some of them were not that all right, so first one I picked up in September was actually a um, book exchange book with the booktube Bessies. This is The Map of Salt and Stars by Jennifer. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce. I'm not going to pretend. Uh, first of all, let's just appreciate this cover. It is gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then we, of course, have maps because we need maps. Um, I did a little bit of reading slash listening to this book. Uh, this one takes place, we have the summer of 2011, and Noor loses her father to cancer. Her mother moves her and her sisters to New York City, um, or from New York City back to Syria. And so she has a hard time. She knows her family came from Syria, but she feels very American and very tied to the United States. And so moving to Syria was a bit of a culture shock for her. Um, and they move there in order to keep her father's spirits alive. Um, she continues to remind herself of her father by telling um, their favorite story. The story of a 12th century girl who disguised herself as a boy in order to apprentice for a map maker. So within this story, you have present day moving to Syria, dealing with grief of losing her father. And then we have this past story and where I was getting confused is that they meld together a little too much. Um, I would be listening and I'd be like, wait a second, I thought we were in the present time period, but now we're in the past or that I thought we were in the past and now we're back to the present. Um, and it does involve in the current time period, it does involve Noor's family having to flee because a... Um, Shell destroys their house. Uh, they're in the midst of a war. They become refugees. Um, yet, so they're traveling at the same time and on the same path as the girl from the story is traveling. So it was a little confusing. I was, it was just hard to follow. Uh, so then I would almost get a little bored with it. I'd be too confused with it. It, it just kind of missed the mark for me. Um, I don't even know how to rate it. It was just, it was just hard. I wanted to like it so much, but it just did it. So it is, it, it is what it is. You know, not every book is for every person, right? All right. The next book I picked up was for book club that I had in September. Um, our theme for that book club was spicy September. And we read Credence by Penelope P. Douglas. Wow. Like I thought I, I knew spicy. I'm like blushing. I thought I knew spicy, but man alive, Penelope Douglas does spicy to the nth degree. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I read this book. So we have our main character. I can't think of what her name is. I can't. Um, she ends up being an orphan. So it was weird that I was kind of reading two books at the same time because I was doing this at the same time as Map of Salt and Stars. Um, where the character lost a parent, but she loses both her parents and comes from a very well-off family and ends up kind of having to go live with her stepfather. No, her stepbrother. No, her dad's stepbrother. So her step-uncle um, and his two sons. And they live in Colorado, kind of in the mountains where like they get stuck in their house and or on their property for months at a time because of winter and this, the roads become impassable. So she goes to live with them and there are some attractions. Can't even look at you. <laughs> there are some attractions between her and her cousins, step cousins and her and her step uncle. It's just very, wow. I don't know. I don't know how to rate that either. Yeah, we're gonna move on. Uh, then we picked up a fantastic book for my other book club. 
Take My Hand by Dolan Perkins Valdez. I've already lent this out to a friend of mine who needed a book club book. I'm like, absolutely, I pushed it right into her hand, like legit told her it's on the front porch, come get it right now. Um, this is a historical fiction that takes place in the 70s? 70s. Um, I just loved everything about this. I love the characters. I love that they weren't perfect. I loved that there was definitely some really great intentions, yet the lesson of even with great intentions, sometimes people still get hurt. But uh, this covers the um, happenings in the South that did happen around um, coerced or forced sterilization of minor girls who maybe are living in poverty. Um, so our main character is a nurse. She's fresh out of school. She's got her first job at this clinic and she's given this caseload and her conscience is telling her that forcing children to take shots of depo for birth control at such a young age just isn't right. And so it takes her on this whirlwind of how does she fix this? What does she need to do? Where does she, does she even have a leg to stand on? What is she fighting against? It's such a great, it was well written. Again, characters you can't help but fall in love with. You're rooting for some, you're not rooting for others. You're understanding why people believe their two sets or multiple sets of beliefs that are in the book. It's just, it's a really solid, this is what I love about historical fiction books. Um, you get not only what happened in the past, but you get a taste of what's happening now with some of the characters. It's just, it's lovely. It's fantastic. Pick up that book. I can't speak enough about it. The other book I also, I'm going on a book club list here. I have three book clubs that I'm part of. So we have The Illiterate Daughter by uh, Chia Gong Zvang. So she is actually local to me. Um, one of the people in my workbook club actually met her at the farmer's market and realized that there was a book, or I think his wife did, something like that, and brought it to book club. So this follows, it is historical fiction, but it's based on not only Chia's journey from Laos to um, Wisconsin, but also her in-laws journey. So uh, there is, there was a war that the United States was involved in within Laos. It was a bit of a secret war is what she keeps referring to it because we couldn't necessarily be on the ground helping them, but we gave supplies and airstrikes and, and kind of helped them from afar. And so it is the story of the communist party ending up taking over Laos and anybody connected to kind of anyone who's against them or help the Americans were now kind of being attacked. So this family in this book is forced to flee um, and it's their journey of leaving, of surviving, of getting away, the ups, the downs, the everythings. Um, I gave this solid three and a half, 3.75. Um, I'm going to tell you the writing is not fantastic at times, uh, but please, what helped me get through, I don't want to say get through, but what helped me still appreciate this story is Chia came here and she was 15. She could not read, write, nor speak English. And she's now an adult and has written a book. So part of that I could look past because I was just so invested in this story. Um, I don't think that this story is told enough, whether in nonfiction or fiction books, at least from what I've seen, I'm now, again, seeing more. Um, and if I can be an advocate for not only her and her family story, but for any types of stories that follow this timeline and this period in our history, do it. So I'll have links below. I highly, highly suggest you pick up The Illiterate Daughter. I think it was, it just is a story I haven't read before. And it just, it just really opened my eyes to the history of what could be my neighbors. So loved it. Um, the next book I listened to on audio was I'm Glad My Mom Died by Je Jeanette McCurdy. I, 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 it was a rough theme this month. 
lots of people dying. Um, I'm glad my mom died. I gave this four stars. It was a very good audiobook memoir about Jeanette McCurdy's life. She starred in iCarly, which my kids absolutely adored. We had I, iCarly was on the TV for many and many a mornings or times. And it talks about how her becoming an actress was really her mom's life goal living through her. And then the toils and tribulations and abuse it actually led to from her mom. So really eye-opening, fantastic book. Uh, the next book I picked up on my Kindle is The Gangster's Daughter by Jodie Lee Murray. Again, another kind of connection. I was actually at a volleyball game for my daughter and Jodie's sister, who I used to work with, was like, did you know my sister wrote a book? I'm like, no. Immediately downloaded then. Um, and it's called The Gangster's Daughter. I don't know if I said that at all. But it follows a woman who is, um, she's the daughter of basically a, a gangster, a drug lord, a not great guy. And she is attempting to live her life on the straight and narrow, um, but ends up having to go stay in her house on a little island off the coast of North Carolina, I think, um, because her father has now gone into hiding because there's a bit of a threat against the family. Apparently not a big deal. It happens. So she's there. But while there, she starts to kind of remember a point in time in her life, in her past, when she um, she was taken, she was kidnapped, basically. It, you find out pretty early in the book that that happened. So you're dealing with what's happening in the present. Um, she's finding out that the she's going she's betrothed to someone and is going to be forced to marry this person in order to kind of end whatever this this war is that's going on between multiple families um her dad again is not available at the moment and so she's trying to figure out what exactly is going on adhere to his wishes yet still live her own life um with this thing hanging over her head that she has to get married she's not interested in it and then kind of re looking at what happened in her past is a great debut. Absolutely. I give it three stars. There are parts that drug on a little bit too much, were a little too descriptive, like when actionable things were happening. So the past timeline when she was kidnapped and that was happening, super engaged in that, didn't want to stop reading it. But when you got to like the B storylines and like her, a bit of her work life, it drug on a little too much. Um, so uh, again, great start. If you enjoy those types of stories, there's definitely a romance in it. Um, for sure, the romance was fantastic. The relationship was fantastic. Um, characters were great. Great debut. I enjoyed it. She did just have another book come out that was historical fiction that I want to get my hands on as well. So we did that one. And then I ended the month on another audiobook. I listened to three books this last month. That's pretty decent. Um, I listened to Bluebird by Sharon Cameron. And this is one that was shoved into my hands by Amanda from On the Middle Shelf. And she basically was like, you need to download this. You need to listen to it right now. So I did. Um, it is a World War II historical fiction. But it takes place post World War II like right after. Um, so we have our main character who is arriving in America as a refugee from Germany, trying to restart her life, yet has this underlying goal of seeking revenge. So it's kind of the what happened to the people and women, not only women, the people, women, children, men who lived in Germany, who weren't necessarily full on victims of the war, but ended up being victims of the war. There's ties to Nazis in this. There's um, just this overarching need for justice is what happens in this book. I love the perspective of it being post-World War II. Um, the writing was great, the characters were great. It was an amazing audiobook. I would highly recommend that. So give that one five stars. And another book I picked up Silence for the Dead by Simone St. James. Uh, Buddy read this with a couple of fabulous ladies. Um, I thought this was a newer release. It is not. It's a little older, but it's okay. Uh, this one takes place in 1919, and it follows this really, really creepy house who, like, the house itself 
is almost a character within the book. It's so good. Um, so we have Kitty Weeks. Uh, she is, you learn pretty quickly she's on the run. Um, she basically claims she's a nurse to get this job at, what is it called? The Portis House. It is a remote, magnificent, it's a massive estate that's turned into a mental hospital. This is post World War One. So the patients at the Portis House are all veterans who are suffering from some pretty bad PTSD. Um, they have nervous attacks, there's tormenting dreams, yet Kitty finds out pretty quick there's a little bit more going on at Portis House, that maybe there's some spirits there that are kind of feeding on the fears of these men, maybe. It's just so good. It's so good. So you have Kitty, who's not really trained to be a nurse, having to face these patients that are dealing with some pretty serious demons of their own. But then there's also this other like side of the house that is not helping the situation. We have the headmistress who is your typical, not really anybody's a fan of the headmistress. You have um, her kind of sidekick. So you have some typical tropes within this story and you have the isolated house that you're kind of stuck in. It was a really great like move into fall creepy season read and I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it four stars. It was good. Silence for the dead. Pick it up. Anyways, that's what I've read. I'm in the midst of October and creepy, creepy book reading month right now. I've already finished a couple. I'm in the midst of Pet Cemetery, which, whew, wow, that's just fantastic. Um, so I can't wait to report back and let you know if I have accomplished my goal that I have every October, which is to scare the bejesus out of me. Haven't, hasn't happened yet, but we have options. Um, anyways, if you've read any of these books and you want to chat about them below, feel free to meet me in the comments. I'll see you there. Otherwise, like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.